One of the things that's really cool about CDK is CDK has been around roughly 50 years and always focused on dealer success. We really believe the dealer model is the dominant channel for heavy truck, the heavy truck business as well as the auto business. And I'll talk a little bit more about that thesis again when Brookfield acquired the company. So we've been around a long time with dealers as our core customer. We work with OEMs, a number of OEMs here, and, and uh, you know, we, we, we want to work very constructively with OEMs as well because we know they're, they're incredibly important to the ecosystem. But fundamentally, dealers are our customers, and we view you as our core customer. So CDK went private last July and was acquired by Brookfield, uh, which is a large asset manager, roughly $700 billion in assets. Uh, it's a Canadian firm. And sort of think of them in the same category as Carlisle, KKR, Blackstone, some of the household names that you would think about in private equity. Um, I worked with Brookfield. I'm Canadian by background. I knew them before. And we worked together to, uh, to acquire CDK. Now, uh, I know uh, a lot of you have had to raise money at times. And you can imagine to raise $8.4 billion, you have to be able to uh, convince people of a thesis, right? Convince banks, investors, uh, equity investors, debt investors, others to write a check for $8.4 billion. And one of the core theses uh, of our investment is that dealers are here to stay, that electrification is not going to destroy the profit pool of service, that consolidation will continue to happen. Uh, which is you know, helpful to CDK's business model. Four, that we can modernize our software, and, and Chris Anderson's gonna join us later and talk about our modernization journey. I always like to say the, the benefit of CDK is we've got 50 years of experience, so all that in intellectual property, all those idiosyncrasies that happen in the business, they're, they're uh, capable to be managed in our system. So yesterday you heard um, from Jeff and Peter about the industry. Uh, when I was in the car business, um, you know, I used to joke with people, people always talk about the car business is cyclical. I'm like, dude, if you think the car business is cyclical, try, go try the truck business, okay? Um, and so you heard yesterday uh, about some of the trends, and obviously I think we're, I, I generally agree with probably 95 or 98 percent of what, uh, what Jeff said yesterday about the economy and the risk, but I would say that, uh, you know, I think over the next five, seven years, there's a positive trend. There'll be some volatility in there, as there always is in, uh, in the truck business. But we're really positive on your business and, and our commitment to your business, and that's why we're hosting this event. So just a few fun facts. I mean, we know that the pandemic really changed consumer expectations for everything. We know fleets are aging. Um, I think Jeff talked a little bit about that. Obviously, inventory continues to be a challenge, margins. Uh, are compressing and labor, labor shortages, right? So this is where somebody like CDK is really important because what's the point of technology, right? The point of technology is to help with process and efficiency, make your employees more efficient. I think it's going to be tough to hire people um, you know, for, for quite some time. So technology is going to be a key component of, uh, of that exercise. So one of the things I love about dealers Dealers are so entrepreneurial, right? You always figure it out. Volume can drop 30, 40 percent. Uh, even I think Jeff had a strong, strong case yesterday, of a, a very bad recession, volume drops 58 percent. And we've seen that before. But dealers, you know, you figure it out, right? And, and that's what I love about dealers, the entrepreneurship. And you see opportunity uh, where others see risks and threats. And so, I think that's, we want to be part of your success and we want to work with you and really help you simplify your business. So we think about our strategy in four buckets. Uh, you can see them here. Driving productivity and efficiency, managing business outcomes, and keeping dealers connected with your OEMs, and owning the customer experience. And we're going to talk about each of these uh, in particular in our strategy. So now I'm going to invite Chris Anderson, this handsome young man uh, shown here on the, on the screen. Um, Chris is our Vice President of Product Management, and he's going to come on and, and take you through some of our specific strategies and, so, and where our product's going in a, certain, in, a, in a number of areas. So come on up, Chris. So really, when we talk about um, driving productivity and efficiency, you know, we have a lot of work we're doing with simplification. 
And that simplification is really exemplified with Unify. Unify is the new entry point into our applications and our workflows. Um, I'll show that to you, and then I'll also demonstrate what we're doing with modern workflows, again, to really drive simplification and ease of use. So it all starts with single sign-on. Single sign-on using CDK Simple ID that has awareness of your end users, what they have permissions to, um, and the relationship between them, your store, your enterprise. And when you log into Unify, you get access to the applications, the applications that you use today, your end users use today, as well as the modern workflows. So if you think about the experience today, I log into the application, I navigate to where I need to go. From Unify, you can go straight to the modern workflows that your end users use. In addition to that, we offer a curated experience, the ability to use my Unify to configure the tiles, to configure the, the look and feel of the system, to interact with the way your users want to interact with them. Think of it like your mobile device and the way you set up the desktop on that. So from here, I'm going to show you one of the modern workflows, stepping into we call it workflow menu, but this is for any of you that are using the new workflows in AP, AP invoice or AP payment, you'd recognize this as the new navigation within the workflow. So what I'm showing, really two or three things for you to see. One is just the, the simple navigation on the left. Two, we've done a great deal of work in accounting in the AP space. So think the entire procured to pay workflow all the way from I'm onboarding a new vendor, my interactions with the vendor management, through the invoice management with AP invoice, through the payment management with AP payment, all the way to 1099. That work is, we look at that as kind of phase one and it builds the framework that we need for developing the rest of the solutions, not only in accounting, but across all of your operations in sales, FI, parts and service. So we're really excited. We feel like we've got that great foundation with the first phase. And then let me show you an example of one of the workflows that we recently released just to understand kind of how we take an approach that's really user-centric. So for 1099, and this is a workflow that's used once per year for US dealers for tax filing and submission. And so if you think there's turnover in the dealership, I've got a new employee, they don't do this very often at all, now I have to train them how to do this thing that they're only gonna do one time per year. So we really leaned into some of the exception-based reporting techniques to deliver an exception-based workflow. So the end user logs in, they go to 1099 for the year end, they can quickly filter and find where they've got exceptions, where maybe they're missing a tax ID or an address, go straight from there into the vendor file where they can make the changes they need, and then right back to the workflow where they can finish out, do their 1099 print, file submission, we had some great feedback. This was released in January of this year, and we've had really great feedback from end users uh, on just the ease of use and simplification. I was, at a, I was at a dealer in Seattle about a month ago meeting with the dealer principal and the CFO, and the CFO actually brought up the 1099 and said that her people you know, were, actually went to her and said, hey, this new 1099 process is so much easier uh, than it's historically been. And to Chris's point, it's something you do once a year. Uh, you're typically not very good at it if you do it once a year. And I think with the, with the new modern workflow, it's really um, you know, saving people a lot of time in the counting year end. So one of the other things that uh, dealers want, and you heard it yesterday in some of Peter's comments, is uh, better business insights, better reporting. And so performance view is something that uh, we're working on to give you a better insight. And so Chris is going to uh, give you a look at what performance view can bring to dealers. Thanks, Brian. So it was, um, the session last night was great for those of you that got to watch, for those of you that presented, thank you. Um, and I want to tie this back to some of the comments at the end from Peter on our research team. So there's a great demand and need for better reporting, for better insights to help you run your business. And what I say is our data intelligence team's been hard at work, you know, building those insights to give you the timely information that you need to make decisions. And what I'm giving here is a glimpse of what we're working on, what's coming with Performance View. So really, Performance View is about establishing kind of those KPIs for your business managing the metrics that mean the most to your company, and really doing it across the entire enterprise. The view here is in service, but giving you reporting across service and parts and sales and FI to better manage the metrics. 
one of the key aspects of it, it's not only the data and presenting you the data, but it's giving you the data in a, a very meaningful way. So allowing you to set benchmark targets for what you need your KPIs to be, and then even becoming a collaboration tool within the organization where you can set alerts. So if you're over succeeding on your benchmarks, you get triggers and notifications of overperformance, or where you're coming up a little bit short, you're getting the warnings and using that for collaboration across the organization. One key area of that is in service, so having the service metrics. And what's great about the service metrics is not only having the ability to see how you're performing, but even going so deep as seeing how are different people within the organization performing, where you might have new talent, you have opportunity, and it, it comes through in the KPIs and the reports uh, within performance view. And then another example of that is with recommended service. So what you're looking at here is recommended service, great detail on you know, where you've got good conversion, where you have opportunity, and again, really focusing across your dealership in all of the areas, and even having the ability to double click through filters, get down to the very specific detail that you need to make the decisions. And then coming with this in the future, having benchmarks, not just within your own organization, but having a concept, we call it dealer like me, where you can look at benchmarks for similar dealerships to see how you perform against others in the industry. So we're really excited about performance view. We have some sessions, we'll be able to show some of that. Happy to talk with you all about that, what's coming, when it's coming. Um, so really addressing managing business outcomes with this new capability. So keeping dealers connected, um, obviously there's a number of important OEMs, many are in the room here today, and one of the things that we, we do, if you think about CDK's role in the industry, I like to think about it as we're in the middle between OEMs, dealers, and your uh, retail customers, and we're bringing that all together. And so we have over 100 OEM integrations, at any given time, we're working on 10 to 15 new ones. And so we're really, um, you know, we're really here to help you and your OEM stay connected, and we'll continue to do that. And then we also have um, a number of partners, independent software vendors. Uh, a number of them are, are uh, here today um, and helping sponsor this event. Um, we have over 80 independent software vendors um, that we work with, again, to help you run your business in the most efficient manner. So that's a really key part of how we view keeping, keeping you connected, not just with your OEMs, but with the greater ecosystem of, of innovation that's out there. So now uh, we'll talk a little bit about owning the customer experience. And I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Chris, who'll take you through how ServiceView is helping dealers deliver excellent customer service. Great, thanks, Brian. So I'll tie this one back to last night as well. So if you remember at the end, some of the innovation, some of the new techniques that dealerships were trying to make adjustments to changes in the market, and one of those was around video and using more video. And then we also saw it in Jeff's presentation around digitize, like the connections back to your customer. And ServiceView is a great example of that. It's a product we brought to market uh, with our partner True Video. And it's got a lot of capability around engagement, it's a communication platform, but at its core, it is a, an instrument for creating video evidence to make recommendations to your customers on repair. So basically your technicians are able to take video, show where recommended service, or even show what the problem is, and then get that to the service advisor, get that back to the end customer. And it really drives on a couple of fronts. Like one is, with the greater evidence, there's a, a much higher conversion rate on the recommended service. Um, and then there's much faster approval time using either text or email, but just having that communication, having the video evidence of, of the service. So we're really excited about that. We've got customers on it that are recognizing great benefit that come from a, a solution like that. And it, it really goes to, you know, your customers have different expectations. They're growing expectations for higher, higher performance and service. And this is what we're offering to help you meet that expectation from your customers. Thanks, Chris. So our product strategy is focusing on enabling your success. Um, our service strategy is, again, aligned to support your, our dealers. And in our breakout sessions today, we're going to go a lot deeper on our product and service strategies. So I, I want to thank you, but before I wrap up, um, I, I do want to uh, touch on one thing. So 
I think many of you coming in here, uh, or maybe six months ago, 12 months ago, really asked, is CDK committed to the truck business? And when I worked with Brookfield uh, in due diligence um, uh, on CDK, and um, as soon as we uh, assumed ownership of the company, and I became the CEO, uh, I did a number of things. Uh, first of all, uh, got uh, Dave Carson in his uh, position today and carved out a specific team uh, for truck. Uh, the same thing uh, under Chris, carved out a specific uh, product team for truck, uh, put some more investment dollars um, into the business on the product side and on the sales side, uh, and also on the marketing side to have an event like this and bring us all together. Uh, went out to see a lot of customers, and so I just want you to know, uh, you know, we are committed to the truck business, that's why we're here. And um, under Brookfield ownership, that was a strategic decision that we made uh, to grow the truck business and to reinvigorate this business uh, for CDK. I'm, I'm super happy that you're here, that you took your time to come here. Uh, and I want you to hear that message you know, directly from me. So thank you uh, again for being our partner. Thank you.